Let's begin with the anatomy of the heart. This image depicts the surface anatomy of the heart. Blood returns to the heart through the superior vena cava and is delivered to the right atrium. Adjacent to the right atrium is the right ventricle. On the opposite side is the left ventricle and the left atrium. And the large vessel leading off the top of the heart is the ascending aorta. The heart itself is located within the thoracic cavity between the two lungs. The left and right atrium are separated by the interatrial septum. The left and right ventricles are separated by the interventricular septum. The heart is the main pump in this system and it generates the pressure required to move blood through the system. The heart itself is composed mainly of myocardium or muscle tissue and this is encased by a tough covering known as the pericardium. The pericardium is a serous membrane that makes up the outer layer of the pericardial cavity. This cavity is located between the pleural cavities in the mediastinum. The pericardium itself is made up of serous and fibrous layers, and the wall of the pericardium is divided into the visceral pericardium and the parietal pericardium. The loose connective tissue of the visceral pericardium is attached to the cardiac muscle tissue. The pericardial cavity contains between 10 and 20 mLs of pericardial fluid. This fluid acts as a lubricant to reduce friction of the opposing surfaces of the pericardial layers. The following is a clinical note on carditis. Carditis is a general term for inflammation of the heart. Infection in the heart can lead to carditis and depending on the region affected, it's either known as endocarditis or myocarditis. Endocarditis is an infection that involves the inside surface of the heart and this can lead to the involvement of the heart valves and the chordae tendinae. Damage to these structures inside the heart can lead to the formation of blood clots in addition to affecting heart function. Myocarditis is an inflammation and infection of the myocardium. The heart rate can be elevated due to effects on the sarcolemma, and the myocardium itself can be damaged due to the infection. The histology of the heart wall. The wall of the heart is made up of three layers, the epicardium, myocardium, and endocardium. The epicardium makes up the external surface of the heart and this contains areolar connective tissue. The myocardium is the middle layer of the heart and it's made up of interlocking layers of cardiac muscle tissue and connective tissue. The wall of the left ventricle, for example, is the thickest portion and it contains a thick myocardium. The innermost layer of the heart is known as the endocardium. The endocardium also covers the heart valves and chambers. This layer is made up of simple squamous epithelium and it's continuous with the endothelium of blood vessels that are attached to it. If the endocardium is involved during a heart attack or myocardial infarction, it's called a transmural infarction. The developmental anatomy of the heart. In the first two weeks of development, the heart is formed as thin walled tubes of muscle. After three weeks, the heart is now pumping blood and contains a single central chamber. At this time, a single large artery, known as the truncus arteriosus, delivers the blood to the general circulation. Eventually, as development continues, the ventricles are formed by week four from the bulbous cordis. By the fifth week of development, the atria and ventricles become separated by the interatrial and interventricular septa. At birth, the foraminal valley, which separates the pulmonary and systemic circuits of the body, closes. <laughs>